lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. And what I realized with the club is what makes them so mad is when you don't want to be a part of the club, that pisses them off. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers. The important thing is, you know, for me to go on these platforms, say what I feel about what I think. And, you know, some people may get pissed off because I'm going to talk to everybody. All right, so get this. Ice Cube has just dropped a bombshell on JLO, telling her it might be time to lay low and hit the hide button. Why, you ask? Well, some new footage has just made its way into the wild, and let's just say it's got everyone buzzing. Picture this. You're scrolling through your feed, and bam, there's talk of a leaked video that's stirring up all sorts of drama. Now, Ice Cube, being the straight-up legend he is, doesn't usually get into the gossip game, but this time, he's stepping up, sending a heads-up to JLO that it's probably a good idea to duck out of the spotlight for a hot minute. You know things are getting real when Cube's dishing out advice on keeping a low profile. What's in that footage, you wonder? Well, that's the million dollar question, setting the internet on fire and sending fans into a frenzy. Stay tuned, because this story is just heating up. A wedding, babe. He's in a wedding. I want you to call him. I like taking my hair out like this. It reminds me like when I was 16 in the Bronx, running up and down the block. Like crazy little girl. Man, JLo's really going through it this year, huh? First, her movie tanks, then she's getting roasted on TikTok for her obsession with Bronx, and now there's gossip flying around that Diddy might spill the beans about some drama from 99 she's been trying to keep on the low. And get this, word is her old co-star from Anaconda Ice Cube is chiming in on the chaos. Rumor has it he's warning JLo to straighten out her story because the feds might reopen the case and she could end up testifying. There's even talk about some woman who got hit in the face that night saying she'd spill to the feds if they open things up again. Again. She claims Diddy was bragging about using J-Lo as his gun runner back then too. Crazy, right? So, what's J-Lo gonna do? Is she really gonna get dragged into Diddy's mess with the feds? And will she listen to Ice Cube and spill the beans this time? Let's unpack this wild ride. But in Jennifer Lopez, Puffy believed he had found someone who shared his passion and ambition. I was a dancer, she was a dancer. I was ambitious, she was ambitious. I, I was a workaholic, she was a workaholic. At first, all of those things, um, was working and I benefit. Jennifer's marriage came to an end in 1998. They were finally able to embark on the romance they had been resisting. Things started to happen. I started looking into her eyes, more spending more time with her, and I just fell in love with her. To have somebody who by your side who understands what you're going through when at the end of the day doesn't need anything from you except to love you she was one of the nicest most beautiful people that i had met you know even if you were broke my love don't cost a thing so j-lo and diddy are making headlines again with some old school drama from 99 this guy rodney lil rod jones is suing diddy claiming he was running some sketchy business and now lil rod's thrown in some juicy details about a wild night that got diddy and j-lo arrested he's saying diddy admitted to being part of a shooting and even claimed j-lo handed him the gun this all went down during a night out with diddy his then girlfriend j-lo and shine one of diddy's artists at club new york things got heated when diddy accidentally spilled his drink on matthew scar allen a hot-headed ex-con from Brooklyn. Scar wasn't having it, threw money at Diddy, and started dissing his spending. One thing led to another. Shots were fired, and chaos broke out. Eyewitnesses even said they saw Diddy right in the thick of it, and three people got hurt, including a woman who got shot in the face. Puffy's still giving her high fives, shaking hands, embracing people, you know, telling them Happy New Year and different things. And um, he goes over to high five someone, and this guy just pulls away. And of course, that was a diss. A scuffle broke out between several club goers and members of Puffy's entourage. The guy who uh, refused to shake Puffy's hand, you know, comes up and, you know, started attacking Puffy and saying, you know, you, you, you know, you're no real rapper, you know, you're a punk, you know, you're, the, you're not the only one with money. He approached Puffy in a taunting way and said, you're nothing and I have money too. And in a taunt gesture, threw money in Puffy's direction. 
As the confrontation escalated, witnesses claim Shine Barrow reached for a gun. He drew a weapon, fired three or four shots. Once the shots were fired, all hell broke loose. Three people were hit by stray bullets, and the crowd rushed to the exits. There's no fire, everybody hits the ground. We get out of there, we just fleeing the scene, kind of just getting away from harm, not really understanding what just went on. Puffy and Jennifer jumped into their SUV and ordered the driver to speed away. Don't, don't stop. Police say they ran 11 red lights before they were pulled over. An officer searched the vehicle and found a loaded 9mm handgun under the front passenger seat. Diddy and J-Lo tried to book it in his Lincoln Navigator, but got stopped for a traffic light, and cops found a stolen gun in the trunk. That landed them both in jail, with J-Lo freaking out and crying the whole 14 hours she was in there. She got out quick, though, and has been saying ever since that she had nothing to do with the shooting. As for Diddy, Shine, and Diddy's bodyguard, Wolf, they faced the music in court over the gun stuff. Shine got a tough break and ended up serving 10 years, but Diddy and Wolf got off thanks to some heavyweight lawyers like Johnny Cochran, arguing Diddy was just defending himself. Even with witnesses saying they weren't sure if Diddy was the shooter, rumors flew that Diddy didn't do much to help Shine out. According to a former bodyguard, Diddy might have even leaned on witnesses to turn against Shine. So now, the reason they got off was people was coming to Bad Boy Security, Paul and other people, and said that they were there. So they were giving them the DA's um, and the lawyer's card and tell them to go make a statement. And some of those people who were making statements, they was making statements against Sean. Yo, bro, listen to me. Y'all hearing it from me, but Sean said it himself in his interview. You supposed to be my brother and you got people testifying against me? Those people were testifying, they were brought to Puff first, saying that they, what they saw against Sean, what they saw Sean do. The DA didn't even know those people existed. You understand what I'm saying? Sean said it himself, y'all. Right after that whole mess went down, J-Lo was like, I'm out, and split from Diddy. She steered clear of rappers since then and went through a major makeover, ditching the tough image she had going on with Diddy. Not long after dumping him, she got together with Ben Affleck. Talking about her time with Diddy? Nope, J-Lo was having none of it, especially that night that ended with her behind bars. But despite J-Lo's efforts to leave all that drama in the dust, it's creeping back up on her. Last month, Diddy's ex-producer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones, stirred the pot again. He added to his lawsuit against Diddy, spilling that Diddy had admitted to being involved in that nightclub shootout, with J. Lo apparently bringing the gun into the club for him and handing it over when things got heated. And now, the woman who was shot in the face that night is stepping into the spotlight, saying she's been trying to tell her story for 24 years, but people brushed her off, calling her a liar. Natanya Rubin, one of the victims from the club, is backing up Lil Rod's claims and pointing out that Cassie, in her lawsuit against Diddy, mentioned he made her carry a weapon too. According to Natanya, this has been in Diddy's way of operating since the 90s. Puffy said, that's why I shot up the club in New York back in 1999 and let Shine take the fall for it. Let me tell you why that's of utmost importance to me. Because I am the woman who he shot in the face in that 1999, December 27th, 1999, Club New York shooting. I have told everyone ad nauseum since then, even the surgeon who did the surgery to take the bullet, I got shot in my face with a nine millimeter, excuse me, nine millimeter hollow point bullet called a cop killer. I literally have told everyone and never changed what I said. I watched him. I got pow pow in the face. I watched him fire the gun. I've said it all this time. Even the surgeon who did my surgery to take out part of the bullet fragments that was aspirating into my lungs and try to remove as many bullet fragments as possible testified in the criminal trial that while they were putting me under, I was screaming, 
puffy pew pew me in the face. He testified in the criminal trial. It is in the record. They all knew he did it. Everybody knew he did it. But he paid off the club bouncer named Sharice and all these other people and the club owners with their video to hide the video. That's his M.O. Natanya has been shouting from the rooftops for ages about how Diddy was the one who shot her. She even mentioned that the doc who pulled the bullet fragments out of her heard her say it was Diddy right there in the hospital. She's also claiming Diddy was super shady, paying people off left and right, including the club owner, to make sure no one saw the security tapes from that night. And before all these lawsuits against Diddy started stacking up, Natanya was battling trolls online that Diddy allegedly sent after her for over 20 years. She reckons Diddy's been out to get her because she was the only one who managed to sue him and win before Cassie's lawsuit came into the picture. And according to Natanya, Diddy's ego just couldn't handle that loss. Natanya's not about to back down either. She's determined to fight until Diddy faces the consequences for all the trouble he's caused her and her family. Now where does J-Lo fit into all this mess? If Diddy ends up facing a RICO charge and it goes to trial, Natanya thinks J-Lo should also be held accountable for her role that night. She pointed out how unfair it was that while she was fighting for her life in surgery, J-Lo got off scot-free in no time. And guess what? Ice Cube's reportedly been in J-Lo's ear, warning her to cooperate with the feds because those RICO charges against Diddy are no joke. Meanwhile, some fans are now giving J-Lo low a hard time for keeping quiet all these years and not doing more to warn everyone about Diddy. Speaking of Diddy, we can now say a few things about the new trouble that caused all of this 1999 stuff to come resurfacing once again. Diddy's caught in a whirlwind of drama that's all over the internet. With feds raiding places, private jets, and wild parties, Diddy's right in the thick of it. Rodney Jones, aka Lil Rod, a Grammy-nominated dude from Chicago, is shaking things up for Diddy. He worked his heart out on Diddy's love album for a year, only to get stiffed on the money, shares, and royalties. Royalties. He's trying to crowdfund 50k to sue Diddy, but needs way more, like 300k, so every bit helps. After six months of getting the runaround from Diddy, Rod's ready to dish all the dirt. I've been working on an album. Um, I took a year off straight working on this album. That album is the Love Album, Off the Grid by Diddy. Um, and it's Grammy nominated right now as we speak. Um, I should be um, celebrating, but the truth is I'm not. In his whopping 105-page lawsuit, Rod spills the beans. He hung out with Diddy, partying with celebs, chilling at his fancy spots, and even yachting in the Virgin Islands. But it wasn't all fun. Diddy had Rod recording everything, 24-7, and now Rod's got hours of footage showing Diddy's shady dealings. The drama hit a peak on September 12, 2022, when a shooting went down in a recording studio involving Diddy, his son Justin, and some guy named G, leaving G wounded. That freaked Rod out big time. But that's just the start. The feds have been all over Diddy's places in LA and Miami, digging into some serious accusations. Cassie, Diddy's ex, kicked things off by calling him out. Picture it, helicopters, agents everywhere. It's like an action movie scene at Diddy's place. They even picked up his sons, Justin and King, and seized Diddy's phones before he could jet off. They're looking into some heavy stuff, trafficking, domestic violence, racketeering. Homeland Security's on it, saying they're working with local cops to get to the bottom of it. But Diddy's keeping quiet, while Cassie's lawyer and others are pushing for justice. We're not totally sure if this raid is directly linked to those lawsuits hitting Diddy left and right, but it's clear he's facing a storm. Besides the recent drama, Cassie accused him of some serious crimes last November, and others have joined in with their own stories. Diddy's denying it all, but with him stepping back from Revolt TV and companies dropping him, it looks like tough times ahead. New audio has surfaced as part of a lawsuit that accuses Christian Holmes, Sean Diddy Combs' son, of sexual assault. The music mogul is not accused of sexual assault in the lawsuit, but is included over allegations of liability and aiding and abetting. The lawsuit cites audio from a makeshift recording studio on the yacht where the alleged assault happened. This is the latest in a series of lawsuits filed against the rap mogul and businessman. Both men, father and son, deny the allegations against them. All right, look. Diddy's son, King Combs, was hit with a lawsuit alleging that he, he sexually assaulted a staff on a yacht. Now, the alleged victims claim elective, the alleged victim claimed that she was sexually assaulted by King Combs while she was working as an employee during one of uh, the holiday yacht parties back in December. Tonight, more accusations against Sean Diddy Combs, and now one of his sons. A new 31-page lawsuit filed on Thursday details a trip in 2022 where the plaintiff alleges she was working as a stewardess aboard a yacht owned by Combs when his son, Christian drugged and sexually assaulted her. 
The lawsuit alleges that an audio recording made during the night in question is evidence of the woman denying his advances as he gropes her. The plaintiff's lawyer provided those clips to NBC News. In one recording, a woman believed to be the alleged victim is heard saying, Excuse me, you don't touch my Please. legs like that. T I'll move my legs the way I want to. Uh, uh. If I want to do this, then I will. <laughs> you don't touch my legs like that. Soon after, according to the lawsuit, Christian speaks and tries to get her to stay. Who can I talk to? I'm going to say you. Requ I requested you right now. Well, you can take your hand off my for the first thing. According to the lawsuit, the alleged victim then left the recording studio and attempted to resume her stewardess duties. But the suit alleges Christian found her again, this time asking her to find him a place to sleep. She claims she showed him to a cinema area, but instead of resting, she alleges in the suit that he became violent and wouldn't let her leave. He groped her, the lawsuit claims, took his clothes off, grabbed her arms, and tried to force her to perform oral sex on him. The woman claims she fought him off until someone else walked in. The lawsuit includes photos of a bruised forearm, allegedly the victim. Diddy's son, Christian Combs, is now caught up in some serious drama, accused of sexually assaulting a woman on a yacht party that Diddy organized. This lawsuit out of LA is saying Christian, at 26, attacked a woman named Grace Omarque during what was meant to be a chill boat trip. Instead, it turned into a wild bash. The timing, just before Diddy's big New Year's Eve party, not exactly the pre-party buzz anyone wanted. Christian's facing accusations of sexual assault, harassment, and causing emotional distress. And Diddy's not off the hook either, with claims he might have helped set the stage for the alleged assault. Diddy's legal team is brushing off the lawsuit as baseless and scandalous, ready to kick it out of court. But Grace's lawyer, Tyrone Blackburn, is pointing fingers at Christian and Diddy, suggesting a disturbing pattern of behavior. Grace's account is pretty harrowing. She alleges Christian drugged and assaulted her, backing it up with audio clips. The yacht sounded like a party gone wrong, with drugs, celebs, and chaos. Grace was wary from the start, especially after being told Christian was joining the party. According to her, Christian was pushy with drinks, leading to her feeling disoriented and then assaulted. The lawsuit includes audio that suggests Grace saying no to drinks and Christian's advances, with even the sounds of an unwanted encounter. Producer Jones, who's got beef with Diddy too, recorded the audio. NBC News got a peek at some clips, adding to the eerie details of Grace trying to escape Christian's advances, only to be cornered in the yacht cinema. Photos in the lawsuit show bruises Grace claims came from Christian's forceful grabs. She managed to escape only when someone else walked in. Post-incident, Grace says her life spiraled. Complaints to the yacht captain got her nowhere, leading to her job loss. Her mental and physical health deteriorated, leading to anxiety, panic attacks, eating disorders, and seizures. As Grace seeks justice, her lawyer praises her courage, hoping it encourages others to come forward. This isn't the Combs family's first rodeo with legal troubles. Sean Diddy Combs faces accusations from four women of sexual assault since last November. Producer Jones has his own claims against Diddy, involving coerced participation in dubious activities, including drugging at parties. The plot thickened last month when Homeland Security raided Diddy's properties, finding guns and seizing phones amidst investigations that now include allegations of some heavy dupe violence against Sean Combs. Diddy's lawyer stands firm, insisting on his innocence and challenging the accusation's credibility. Even though there's this clip of Diddy busting moves out there, it's not telling us everything. The guy's obviously not okay. He's been seen outside his Miami place looking super stressed. And no surprise there, he's in the middle of a storm of scandals. Lawsuits are piling up, Homeland Security's on his case, and now his ex, Jade Ramey, is throwing a wrench in the works by denying some heavy-duty accusations, saying she wasn't hired by him for sex work. Yeah, things are heating up. Despite the drama, Diddy hasn't been slapped with cuffs or charges from the recent raids at his places. But the buzz is that his ex Cassie and several other women accusing him of sexual assault are now chatting with the feds about a sex trafficking investigation. Cassie grabbed headlines last November with her lawsuit against Diddy, hitting him with allegations of battery and downright abuse. She's saying he forced her into some really dark scenarios with other guys, all while he watched and filmed it. So, there you have it, the latest chapter in the Diddy drama, a whirlwind of allegations, lawsuits, and federal scrutiny, all swirling
swirling around one of the biggest names in the music industry. Amidst the chaos, Diddy's personal turmoil and the serious nature of the accusations against him and those in his circle have captured the public's attention, painting a complex picture of fame, power, and accountability. But in a surprising twist, Ice Cube's stark warning to J-Lo, urging her to hide after new footage is leaked, adds another layer of intrigue and speculation. It's a stark reminder of how deeply interconnected the lives of these celebrities are and how quickly circumstances can change when hidden truths come to light. As this story continues to develop, it's clear that the implications reach far beyond just Diddy or J-Lo. This saga isn't just about the alleged actions of one man, it's about examining the shadows that lurk behind the glamour and glitz of the entertainment world. It's a call to reflect on the standards we hold for those in positions of power and influence. The unfolding narrative promises more revelations, more drama, and inevitably, more debates over the truth. As the legal battles progress and more information emerges, the public will be watching closely, eager for the next chapter in this Hollywood roller coaster. The show is far from over, and with Ice Cube's warning to J-Lo, it seems the drama surrounding Diddy is just heating up. In the world of celebrity scandals, the spotlight never dims, and the music never stops. Even when the dance gets complicated, stay tuned, there's surely more to come. Akon gave his two cents about Diddy, and this is what he had to say. Just pray for the man, you know, um, you know God knows best, whatever's happening, God's dealing with it. And that was the best thing to say, but I, you know, it is very unfortunate that things in this business are always, you know, being exposed in certain ways. And I think things could be done differently, but I think this is a matter for God to just continue dealing with how he's dealing with it.